Hi all, welcome back. Today is a recipe video showing you all how I make ghee from butter. I usually buy Amul brand which me and my family love the taste. I couldn't find it in any of the stores over here these days so decided to make ghee from butter which I guess it's a much better option. And along with this showing a recipe that's chicken dum biryani. So keep watching. I like the taste of Leopak butter. You can take any of your choice. Here I have taken 2 unsalted butter of 400 grams each. So that's a total of 800 grams of butter. Just cutting it into cubes so that it melts quickly. Now into a heavy bottom vessel add the cubes of butter. Keep your flame to the lowest while beginning to melt the butter so that it doesn't burn. Later you can increase. Let it melt on its own slowly. Once the butter is melted completely, turn the flame to medium so that the butter boils. You can see the white scum forming on top while it's boiling. Let it reduce. It's almost done. Now turn off the flame and let it cool down for some time. Take an airtight glass jar. Place a strainer. If your strainer doesn't have very small holes, you can place a muslin cloth or a cheesecloth and strain the ghee. Mine had small holes so I took off the cloth. Now if you want you can make it this way. What I prefer is to keep the butter on medium high flame for some more time till the milk particles that I would say to get a little more brown in color. This gives a nutty flavor to the ghee. Now at this point if you wish you could add a pinch of turmeric and 2-3 to three shallots sliced and when the shallots turn crispy, you can off the flame. I've even seen some adding a few curry leaves. These are all just for flavoring the ghee. Right now I'm keeping it plain. When you strain, it becomes a brownish color. But as days pass on, the ghee becomes yellowish color. You can see in my next part. So that's how I make ghee from butter. Next showing how I make chicken dum biryani. Here I have taken Jiragashala rice. You can use Basmati rice but our authentic rice is Jiragashala. 3 cups of rice. Wash the rice very well. Then soak it in hot water for 20 to 30 minutes.
Moving on to the other ingredients. Chicken cut into large pieces, 1 and a half kilo. Then you need 4 large onions. Slice it very thinly. Now from this separating a few for frying and some for ghee rice. Next is a handful of green chilies. Again a handful of garlic cloves. It was of one and a half whole garlic and two medium sized ginger peas. Crush these either in a mortar and pestle or in a grinder. Then take four large tomatoes. Slice it thinly. Now you can chop it in any way but slicing thinly makes the cooking faster. Then curd around 1 to 1 and a half cup. 1 carrot. Cut it into half and slice thinly. Then you need a big bunch of coriander leaves. Wash and chop it very finely. Mint leaves. Here I am not chopping it, just separating the leaves and I am adding it as such. Firstly frying the onions. You can see the color of ghee has changed to yellow as I had said earlier. Adding two big spoons of ghee to the kadai. And very little vegetable oil. Let it get heated. Adding some onions from the bowl that I had kept aside. Adding some curry leaves along with onions. It gives a good flavor but it's completely optional. When it starts to turn to a light brown color, add some cashews and raisins. Once fully fried, take it out. Now I'll be using the same ghee for the ghee rice. The rice has been well soaked by now, so draining it. Now into a heated vessel, adding the ghee. Then add 4 to 5 cardamom pods, 3 to 4 cloves, and 2 to 3 small cinnamon sticks. While that's seasoned, add some sliced onions and mix. It should be just translucent. Add the rice and roast for around 5 minutes. Then goes in hot water. Here I've used 5 cups water for 3 cups of rice. When it just starts to boil, add some coriander leaves. And the sliced carrot. Add some salt and mix together. When it starts to bubble up well, reduce the flame to very low. Cover it and cook till the water is completely absorbed. Meanwhile, let's make the chicken masala. 
I'm using an iron kadai here for getting an extra flavor for the biryani. I'll be transferring to another vessel while keeping it for dum. If you wish, you could straight away use a bigger vessel. Adding two big spoons of ghee. Add the rest of the onions and saute well. Meanwhile, checking onto the rice. You can see there's no water dripping. Now the rice is all done. Just give a mix so that the rice is separated from each other. The onions are getting sauteed. Now add the chicken pieces and mix well. Adding some salt. Here I have taken rock salt. You can go for any. Once the chicken pieces turn to a white color all over, add the crushed ginger, garlic and green chilies and mix well. Cover and cook for 3 to 4 minutes till the raw smell of ginger and garlic is gone. Add the tomatoes, then goes in the curd, mix well, then add chopped coriander leaves and the mint leaves. It was a little tricky while mixing but I managed. You can use a bigger vessel instead. Cover and let it cook for 4 to 5 minutes. Then add 2 tablespoons of coriander powder. 1 teaspoon garam masala powder. Now if you want that yellowish color for the biryani you can add 1 teaspoon turmeric powder. And for an extra sourness, you can add juice of half big lemon. Mix everything well. Now don't cover it. Cook till the chicken is almost done. From the gravy, separate 4 big spoons into a bowl and keep aside. Now I'm adding the chicken masala to a bigger vessel. Here I'm using a big pressure cooker. You can use a normal vessel. Layer it evenly. Layer half the amount of rice on top of it. Sprinkle some chopped coriander leaves. Spread two big spoons of the gravy on top. Layer the rest half of the rice. Again sprinkling some chopped coriander leaves. Then the rest of the gravy. Then sprinkle some fried onions, cashews and raisins. The rest can be used for garnish. Cover and lock the steam and put on very low flame either for 20 to 25 minutes or until you can see the steam coming on top.
Now the biryani is ready to serve. Garnish with some chopped coriander leaves along with the fried onions, cashews and raisins. So that's for today's video. Hope you would try it out and I would love to hear your feedback. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and press the bell icon for getting notified on new videos. See you soon with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.